Hi everybody. I have a special guest this week on the checkup and it is Ingrid. <laughs> Hello. And Ingrid happens to be a registered nurse as well. I am. And she cuts people up. But we're not gonna be talking about that today. No. This week on the checkup we're talking about three ways you can survive dating apps. Because they're scary. <laughs> I haven't been on dating apps in a really long time, but you use dating apps. I do, currently using them. I think actually Tinder came out when after I got into a relationship, so I've never used Tinder. But you've used equivalent of Tinder. Oh yeah, I've used like Grindr with a box of Kleenex. Because did like Tinder that. come based on Grindr? Probably. Yeah. The gays bring everything first. I'm gonna list the ones that I found when I Google searched top straight dating apps. <laughs> Okay. And then you tell me what you think about them or what you know about them or okay. what I should know or what my viewers should know about okay. them. Okay, first one, Tinder. Sex. Bumble. Classier version of Tinder. Okay. E-harmony. Uh, long-term relationship. Long walks on the beach. Exactly. Soulmate. Astrological signs. I'm a Capricorn. What are you? Virgo. Is it a match? Oh, match. That was oh. my next. Oh. <laughs> yeah, match. Hilarious. Is that same, a same as E-harmony. Oh, okay. Plenty of fish. Old school. Oh. First generation. Yeah. Like, like desktop. Yeah. In your mom's basement. <laughs> yeah. oh, First time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the last one I found was Scout. Never heard of it. Yeah, I never heard of it either. It's a new one. <laughs> Should I try it? Yeah, let us know. If you use Scout, just leave a comment below. To survive all of these dating apps, we're gonna give you three quick ways. So number one is avoid being catfished. So how can people avoid being catfished? I think the rule of thumb for me is uh, before you meet anybody, if you can FaceTime with them so that you know oh, who smart. you'll be meeting is actually who they say they are. Right. Wouldn't Tinder be better for that sort of thing because it's linked to your Facebook account? Yes, exactly. Right? So you can do kind of more of a background history tag through <laughs> Facebook right. and deep Google. Ingrid has yes. like really good deep Googling skills. Yes. Right? It's basically a PI. Yeah. But through these profiles, you usually have a name, maybe where they went to university or a current place of employment. Oh. You add those three things into Google along with LinkedIn and right. boom, you found a first name, a last name, <laughs> Plug that into Facebook, I know who you are. <laughs> we got you. Yes, and, and we do it for safety yeah. reasons. And that's how you survive yeah, dating apps. Exactly. It's stalking people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Number two on our list is making sure you get through sending pictures alive. Not that you die from sending pictures. How do we send pictures of ourselves or like nude pictures without you know, eventually being blackmailed or having seen posters in your neighborhood of your like vagina? If you want to send nudes, as a female, that's fine. Right. Just don't include your head in it. Smart. Because it can't come back and haunt you. But this is my rule. Don't include your head in your nude picture, but when you're asking for nude pics, make sure they attach their head so that you know it's them. Exactly. And then when they ask for yours, they'll be like, oh, I don't have my head in it. We're such hypocrites. Yeah. <laughs> it's how you survive dating apps, right. not how, not they, how they survive yeah. dating apps. Don't let them listen yeah. to us. Yeah. Don't care exactly. about them. Okay. For guys, if you're sending girls unsolicited dick pics, mm. just know that within 15 seconds, yeah. she will have shown and sent it to 50% <laughs> of her friends. Because we didn't want the dick pic. Our last rule for dating apps is to meet a guy, not get an STI. What are your rules for like using dating apps for sex? Hookups are fine. Just make sure you have safe sex. Right, like a full body condom. Yeah, absolutely. Or ask them like about their sexual history. Yes. Because I feel like that, that can be awkward. I think so too, but I think it's because we don't talk about it. So do you just type in like, do you have genital warts send? Um, do you know? <laughs> would you? Stumped, would you believe, we stumped Ingrid there. Would you believe yeah. <laughs> that's not the first time I heard that? It really? Yes. I think it's weird to write that as a first or second conversation. <laughs> like an opener. As an opener. If you're at the point where you actually want to have sex, and from what I hear, you're yeah. supposed to wait five dates. Right, this is more if you're in a relationship. If, you, if yeah. you're looking for a relationship, okay. you have to wait five okay. dates. But if you're Who at said that you have point, to wait five dates? Oh. Our friend Kelly. She oh. says the classy girls wait five days. Oh, Kelly. But if you're at the point where you want to have sex, yeah. have a conversation. Okay. Make it less awkward. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. There's three ways you can survive dating apps. Just don't... Don't get catfish. Yeah, don't get catfish. Don't get an STI and don't find your new picture in your neighborhood. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Like it. Share it with your friends and leave us a comment of some of your maybe horrific dating app stories or maybe some successes because we want to hear about it. And tune in next week for another episode of The Checkup.
Bye. Bye.